I was gonna do the I'm a 3D artist intro, but I just don't really feel confident enough to do that. Anyway, hi everyone. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the next phase of me designing my future studio in Blender and also sharing some tips I've learned along the way. Because believe it or not, there's actually some really interesting things you'll pick up and realize while planning a scene out in 3D. Things that you won't realize just by looking at like a 2D plan or even walking around the empty space and trying to visualize what it will look like. There are things which become apparent while visualizing a rendered 3D scene that you wouldn't traditionally think about. So that's what I want to share with you today. So for a bit of backstory, my family and I are going to be moving into a new home, possibly in about a year's time, because it's going to take a while to do renovations and stuff. In this new home, there's a space for me to have a studio. And a while back, I did a video kind of designing what I think this would look like, kind of going through like the different spaces I want available and what I'll be using them for. And over time, the discussion with the architect has basically progressed to a point where they're interested in seeing what I think I'll be using the space for. And therefore, I've kind of done like a new updated concept, which I'm going to show you now. And if you watched a previous video about this, then you might notice that some things are a bit different stylistically. And that's because as we're getting closer to like a more realized point in the project, I'm thinking about the space a bit more realistically. But also when you're designing 3D scenes like this for a space you're going to develop physically in the future, I don't think it really makes sense to make it as hyper realistic as possible. Now that's probably like a really good excuse, like ha ha ha, good excuse Curtis for not making it like super realistic. It's definitely not just laziness. No, but really like because there are so many people involved in the process, like structural engineers as well, sometimes the layouts might need to change. Like for example, if there needs to be like eye beams placed in certain areas or extra support support on walls and also when you think about furniture when you have a look at the availability of furniture now it may be different to the availability when the project is actually done so when it comes to kind of updating this concept I've tried to keep it looking as nice as I think it should do but also not too hyper detailed and stylistically certain in regards to those choices if that makes sense so up here in blender one thing you'll immediately see is that I've got a range of different cameras and these are representing different viewpoints around the room so first of all camera position one represents what would be this my regular digital digital recording space. This is a really cool thing about previewing things in Blender and other 3D software is that you can visualize the camera positions before the space has even been created. So this is my general concept for the digital recording space. Then we have the second camera position. This will be more for like discussion videos for like my second channel and podcasts and things like that. So this dude actually needs to be a bit closer over this way, but I moved him out the way when doing the render to show the architect because this is more about showing them the room. And I just thought it wouldn't really make sense to have him obscuring the room. Anyway, I'll move him over here just for now so you can kind of get a better idea for what that would look like. So like if I was doing a discussion video for the second channel, the framing might be something like this. So maybe I'll even kind of zoom it in for a better focal length. But the idea being that on the Kurt Studio channel, we'll be able to see the studio in the background while I'm discussing things. Then we have the corner view. This is a general overview where we have the entrance on the left side and the patio doors leading to the outside space. This is where lots of natural light is being brought in. Next camera view is the entrance. So this is what it looks like when you enter from the actual house. Again, I wanted to do it in a way where you can basically see all the spaces immediately when you come in. So that necessitated a bit of a change as well because I originally had like a bookshelf like space here or like a possible rack for some technology service stuff or whatever. Um, but it felt a bit claustrophobic when entering the room. Also, there's a cabinet here above a sink space because there's already water being kind of piped into that garage space. Um, I had this cabinet over here, but again, it felt a bit claustrophobic when coming into the room. If I do the uh, shift F for the first person view, actually, I set that to shift F in Blender. It may be different for you. It's the walk mode if you press F3 and look for walk. But again, as you can see, like when you enter the room, it feels claustrophobic there because the cabinet's immediately in your view. So I put above the sink space for now. And then we have the first person camera. So this is interesting again. One thing you might not necessarily think about when trying to visualize your spaces without using 3D and only looking from a 2D plan is whether or not you can actually see things in the room. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be using a double monitor setup. I'll have to wait and see about that because I actually find I don't use my second monitor as much as I think I do. But I did want this TV space and I wanted to kind of use the TV as like a kind of lifeline for my business to show very specific stats that don't give me much anxiety so I can actually kind of keep track of how things are happening. But originally, I noticed that when having a second monitor there, I wouldn't be able to see the TV screen where I had it laid out. And that's something I wouldn't have thought about. So it's actually really cool being able to go into this camera view and look around in a first person perspective to see generally what things would look like and the distribution of light as well. And we're gonna get onto lights in a bit more detail. 
And now we have a view from the outside. Now I have actually modeled out the entire house, but I don't think I'm allowed to show you it for security reasons. So I'll just give you like this limited window here, just having a look in. I just thought it'd be interesting to see what it would look like looking at the studio from the outside perspective. So stylistically, in the previous video, I paid more attention to the color of lighting and how I'm gonna have different colors representing different zones to kind of correspond to the moods I have with those areas because, you know, I get some emotional reaction from different colors. So I was gonna try and match those up, but I actually thought about this a bit more and in my mind my mood towards different styles changes all the time i think it's just the nature of creativity and though i do have like general consistent reactions to certain colors i figured for the studio design it should be as neutral as possible as a baseline and that color should be introduced in the parts which can be easily changed so for example in decorative elements which would come after the fact they could be swapped out to change the mood of the space or even if there's any things like you know strip lights and diffusers and stuff like that that comes after the fact it's not really necessary to show that now so so that's why the entire space is very neutral and contemporary. I've tried to give a general feel of what the room should feel like, like shading wise, because there's going to be a lot of this kind of polished or finished concrete type surface going along all of the ground floor of this building, which is where the garage is going to be. And we generally like the kind of salt and pepper look on these concrete surfaces as well, though there are like so many different varieties of finishes you can get for them. But anyway, that's why it looks very kind of neutral, because I don't want to commit to too many styles at the moment. Like realistically, the only color in here is from these placeholder potential potential art zones and from the obvious Windows XP background. Now the thing about using Blender for this, which is really, really cool, is visualizing the distribution of lighting throughout the scene. Now on the top here, I have these kind of box lights. Now I don't know how possible this will be. I know I could probably DIY this as well. Somewhat recently, I watched the Apple conference thing where they were talking about like, you know, the Apple Watch and the iPhone. And there was a section in there where they showed this studio workspace like room. And they had these really, really cool diffused box lights. I'm calling them box lights. I don't even know if that's the actual technical term for them. But if you've been around on this channel for a while, you know how much I love emissive surfaces and how like incredible they are for lighting objects and scenes. And I just think it works so much better than just like fluorescent bulbs or something. So if it's possible to do something like this, I will look into it. That will be ideal. If not, that will be fine. I'll just kind of like substitute it for other things. But the cool thing is we can preview different layouts to see what's best. So for example, here I have two of these kind of stripped box lights. And when you look at this, it's quite a nice distribution of lighting, but I felt like over here by this digital space, it just felt a bit dark, you know, like even the monitors will be blocking light, the table will be blocking light. And if we actually go back to camera position one, it still just feels a little bit dark, you know, like there's too much of a heavy shadow here. And even these background elements don't get much light. It's very kind of like shadowed in that corner. Now, again, before looking at a 3D render of this, I might have thought that would be appropriate enough. Two big sections of lighting, sure that's enough for the scene but now I can test and see that free is probably better like having one directly above that digital space there makes it way more consistent it looks so much better like the distribution of light even in the corner there so that's something I wouldn't have really thought about also structural eye beams so this is something that we weren't sure whether we would still need or whether the roof could be given extra like material support because basically above this roof area is an outside zone where people will be walking around and sunbathing or whatever it's technically like an exterior zone so the roof needs to be well supported Supported. At the moment in that garage area, there are a couple of these kind of simple beams, but they don't really look incredibly structural supportive. And the architect said to me that there may be a better way to kind of reinforce the roof, but they'll need to speak to the structural engineer about it. But anyway, I had a little experiment with I-beams because this is the kind of traditional position for where they would be. And you can see that they kind of, you know, they block off a lot of the light. If I go into the first person view, they're quite intrusive. Obviously these may be a bit thicker than the regular ones would be. And also it kind of disrupts with like the central placement of things. And and even despite all that, they would intersect with the glass of the patio door as well. And that's because of traditionally how the garage is laid out at the moment. The garage door only comes up so high and then there's an extra section of the wall where the beam connects to. Now, because in this new design, the patio door is floor to ceiling, where the I-beam would be traditionally is now intersecting with the glass. So I'm basically just hoping that they can actually find a way to properly support the roof. They said they should be able to, so we'll see what happens. Um, I also experimented with seeing what would happen if we kind of rotated the I-beam to have like them cross over like 90 degrees so I gave that a try and it would obviously necessitate having the lighting coming in the other angle as well and again this kind of reduces a lot of the light in this area and also because there are two windows here on the back wall the eye beam can only be placed centrally or again like on the edges there and that's going to like really disrupt the space so yeah we'll see what they can do but again I just think it's really interesting actually being able to visualize this and see how zones can intersect with each other or where they're going to fit. 
So let's talk a bit more about how this room was actually made in Blender. Okay, so obviously, as you can tell when I'm rotating this camera, I'm using cycles and there's denoising. I'm using a 2080 Ti, by the way, so not even a 30 series card. I still think the performance is pretty good for all of the emissive light that's going on, including the world node lighting coming in through the scene as well. This is quite like impressive. I do have a 1390 computer, the one codenamed the Render Beast given by the NVIDIA PC specialist collaboration from last year. That is currently packed away again, like everything's packed away already to like start moving out of this house. That's why this background's different, by the way, in case you didn't notice. Like all the furniture has been taken out of this room. I've had to kind of rearrange things in the meantime. But anyway, this 2080 Ti Beast is still holding up very well. And I think a lot of it's thanks to like the Cycles X improvements, which came in somewhat recent versions of Blender. And I think there are even going to be more improvements coming to cycles based on like the algorithmic render methods for calculating the paths. Check out this new video by Rob from Decoded, which explains this pretty well. Anyway, for actually constructing the scene, it's a combination of procedural techniques and pre-made models and materials. So for example, these gaming chairs here come from iMesh. Now this is not sponsored. It was originally recommended to me by Aaron Dale, another Blender creator. iMesh is like a subscription-based service that gives you access to 3D models and textures and stuff like interior visualization. Enjoy the free publicity, iMesh. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not currently signed up with them now but I was when I did this project originally so these gaming chairs were kind of just littered around. I didn't cancel my subscription for any particular reason I just wasn't making like any more of these types of scenes for a while and I'm trying to save some money to actually you know kind of invest in this studio when it eventually comes around. But anyway yeah I thought it was like a really cool resource for kind of furniture pieces. I think these desks also came from them and these were quite easy to modify as well because like if I go into the edit mode one thing I've done with these is just like grab the vertices and kind of extend them as needed which I guess is a bit of a procedural technique as well. The materials may stretch a bit but I don't think that really matters too much for wood grain and we can also do some creative techniques to improve that. For this concrete flooring let me just bring out the material. You can see it's made using this dots node group. Now where does that come from? My procedural patterns pack. Of course I have to plug my own resources. A paid collection of node groups that I use for you know creating like procedural materials and stuff. So if I open the asset browser using the asset browser button for my modular workspaces add-on I can't plug my own stuff seriously. It's like I make these tools because I use them okay. So I have my modular workspaces add-on it adds this convenient button for accessing the asset browser as well as other things. If I press the default parameters button it will load up my default parameters for the asset browser and in here I have my shader node groups with procedural patterns. So what I did was I just dragged in my favorite ones. So that was dots but let me drag in dirt. You know, I can plug a mask in here and get like a different reaction going. So now I have something like a bit more cloudy and dirty going on. So as you can see there are kind of lots of ways that you can combine procedural techniques to get different effects. That one doesn't look too bad actually. That might actually look better for like the outer hallways. Anyway let me plug the dots back in. But but procedural techniques are not the only thing I've used. Now, like I said, I can't show too much of the outside, but I would like to recommend the Polyhaven website. Now again, not sponsored. This is just something that I was using. Polyhaven is like a collection of free and CC0 resources. So there's HDRIs, textures, models, etc. But their texture library is actually surprisingly good. So like if I search for wood, there's quite a good variety going on and I'm pretty sure I use the weathered brown planks. So if I go back into Blender, you can see those here. And then for the bricks, because there's kind of white brick around the place, it was brick wall.003. But the thing is, because I wanted a different color than the original texture, I basically just desaturated the texture afterwards and then kind of modified the brightness and contrast as well to kind of make it fit into the scene. So that's another resource I've been using. If you haven't heard of them before, then definitely check them out because I use their HDMIs in like my startup files anyway, just by default. Now going back to the distribution of lights, let's talk about the green screen because I have a retractable green screen. Um, it's actually that thing behind me there, the one from Elgato. Other options are available again, not sponsored. Maybe these come Companies should sponsor me. Then again, I don't really like the deliverables of some of these sponsorships. Anyway, I made this little retractable green screen device down here. So basically, these are a collection of objects which have been parented together. And if I grab the top bar here, as you can see there, and then drag this up, it will extend the green screen. And then again, I can grab the bottom one and move that around. Now, originally, I had the green screen rotated like this. So it would essentially be kind of facing towards the back of the studio like this. So I would be standing here, standing up, doing a recording. What I noticed, again, something that uh, having a 3D rendered visualization like this really helps with is that the distribution of lighting over the green screen was not very adequate. You, know, you can see that it's coming in here and also from here and then we get this dark space in the middle which to be honest isn't too much of a problem because you know I have artificial lighting so we can really kind of creatively control how the light distributes both over me and also on the green screen behind but I thought well is that really necessary because if there's like a kind of diffused box light going kind of parallel down the studio then why not just rotate the green screen like this put it here so that it has a completely equal distribution of the lighting coming down the screen from the top that is not necessarily from the bottom but again artificial lighting so that's another one of those things that like you don't really think about until you actually 
start previewing this in a render. And then I thought, huh, actually, that's quite interesting because maybe it doubles up as like a kind of privacy thing as well. So people can't see me when they enter the room or I can't see them or like it just like it kind of starts opening up these possibilities. So let's just retract that. So being able to like move stuff around like this is really interesting and it's actually quite enjoyable. Like I would recommend it to you, like if you're trying to plan out a space for like renovation or construction, then maybe try doing it in 3D because you might kind of inspire yourself into new directions. So just to explain a few more things, originally this digital space here was in the back corner, I believe. I may be wrong about that, I can't completely remember, but I moved it out because I figured I like more space around the digital space because we have more possibilities for putting up tripods and extra technology and there's more space for controlling the lighting. Also, it, you feel kind of isolated up against a corner and it's more spacious kind of being out in the middle. I also wanted a bit of space behind as well for a nice background, again also to be able to maybe rig some things up. So I just figured something like this would be nice. And I also wanted a nice way to be able to kind of look out over the space because this is where I'll be most of the time. So why are there two monitors and keyboard setups like this? Is it for another person? Well, no, not really. I would like to be able to take advantage of my different devices. And at the moment I can't really do that. Like I'd like to be able to keep the one I'm using now which I codenamed Codex, and still be able to use this for like render tasks and stuff. So maybe I'll start using the render beast, but then have Codex here. And like, if I need to render out animations in the background, then I'll just pass tasks off to this one and then let that do the work. Or maybe use it for something else as well. I recently also got hand of an Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 as well with a 3070 Ti. That's this one here. And it's absolutely brilliant. Again, not sponsored, although I'm pretty sure Asus tried to get into contact with me. Or was it Acer? I think it might have been Acer. Anyway, so I've got that there because that's where it is right now. And I try and kind of like replicate how I'm currently kind of laid out in my room. Now back in the first camera position here, you'll notice that there's a kind of bookshelf thing back here. That's because I want like a space to be able to display some things because I have like some other hobbies and collections and I think this place in particular will be for like my collection of historical artifacts. And it also shouldn't be hit by those windows as well because I don't want them to be in direct sunlight. Anyway, when I do move into the studio, there'll be some kind of backup computers, which I call Frankenstein computers because I need to kind of strip them apart and use them for other things. So I'll just put them here as well. And I'm considering these as like cabinets. They'll, these will be replaced with other useful things where I can keep like all my different cables and stuff and backup components. This physical space here will be kind of for putting all that stuff together as well, but it may be retrofitted into other types of like device management spaces. But yeah, now I know people were interested in seeing the process of actually like talking to the architects and seeing how this stuff comes together. And I did actually think about doing that. In fact, when I went recently for a meeting with the architect and the quantities Surveyor. I did record like some of the day but not actually at the place and not with them because it's actually really awkward like it doesn't really feel right asking these professionals to be on camera also this is like for a family home so like my mum's there as well taking part in discussions and she's never been on camera on these videos so it just it doesn't really feel right to record everyone so I can just show you like my little you know snippet of my responsibilities here and then hopefully in like a year's time we'll be able to compare this with how it's actually going in terms of the construction and renovations. So we'll come back to this again in the future. Also, thank God for the collection system in Blender. Like I remember when Blender didn't have this and being able to like disable and test different variations is just like so useful. It's also great for just organization, such a useful feature. Anyway, if you've made it this far through the video, make sure to put the house emoji in the comments so I can see who you are. And also let me know what you think. Like how would you change this? How would you change the layout? And oh my God, please don't say add some vegetation because yes, I have been thinking about that. But again, you know, calling back to the discussion about stylization and kind of doing it through the replaceable elements that come afterwards. I feel like vegetation is one of those things. But yeah, let me know if you've done something like this before and maybe you might feel inspired to give it a try. If you like this video, maybe check out some of the other videos on my channel and also some of my tools and resources on curtishole.online slash store. We've got lots of free and paid resources on there for you to help with all of your different types of Blender projects. But also if you want to help me make these videos as well as the tools, then maybe consider signing up to my Patreon where you can get your name permanently added to this evolving artwork I call the Hall of patrons. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe, have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time.